What's up, guys? I'm Will with Basic Gear Review. I'm here with Divinity Rocks at GitCon 2018. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm doing great after that. Oh, oh man. <laughs> so I just kind of wanted to talk about, you know, for those of you who don't know, like what, what it is you do, your current gig, you know, and then we're maybe talk about some of the gear you're running, you know, oh, cool. the philosophy on bass playing, just some yeah, simple stuff, if you don't mind. It. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Sweet. Um, I'm Divinity, of course, and, I, and I, I'm an MC, a bass player, producer. Um, I'm a live performer. I really love to perform. Um, I'm playing right now this uh, Warwick Streamer mm -hmm. LX four string from the custom shop. Beautiful. Um, yeah, it's it's really it's really my baby. Uh, maple neck, Wingate fretboard, um, cherry and maple body. It's active passive pickups, the MEC um, three way J pickups. Okay. So yeah, with the gold hardware, I call uh, this bass Graham. Graham. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Very appropriate. Very appropriate. I, I see you got the drop tune on there too. That's I do. Awesome. I just added it today. That's Marcus really cool. hooked me up. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, that's I love so it. That's so cool. I love it. 
So what kind of like rigs you running when you're playing live, playing out and stuff? What kind of amps? Um, you I'm, pedals I'm using the LWA 1000 okay. um, watt amp. Um, sometimes I love running the SVT, um, the SVT stuff. Oh yeah, you can't go wrong That's, there. Yeah, you can't it's go beautiful. wrong. It's it's classic. Mm -hmm. It's always been uh, one of my favorite combinations, this bass oh, yeah. and that rig. You get a jazz just, setup in an SVT, oh, it's God, unheard of how man. good it is. We played this show in Philly not too long ago and uh, oh man. It was really smoking. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Victor came to the show, which oh, was really man. cool. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. so cool. Sometimes I run, I run a few pedals. Mm -hmm. um, I just got this pedal from TC. I do not know exactly, remember the, exactly the name of it, but it's a, um, an octave pedal. Oh, I can't remember the yeah, name of I'm it. Yeah, I'm not but sure. Oh, the subbing up. So, yeah, the subbing sub up. up. Yeah, yeah. I, I did a tone print so, for the subbing up yesterday. Yo, this yeah. joint is dope. It's awesome. So sweet. I think the pedal they gave you actually has my tone print on the tone print. So oh, if that's you want to check it out, if oh, you want to yeah, check it out, check that out. I was kind of going for like a bass octave deluxe MXR meets yeah. like an OC2, a yeah. boss. You know what I mean? Yeah, super Get some of that real synthy stuff in there. And the reaction time is really beautiful. Yeah, it tracks wonderfully. Yeah. It's awesome. Awesome. It's beautiful. So, um, you know, in the world of music, what got you started? You know, what were you doing? Oh, man, I started off uh, emceeing, writing okay. rhymes, writing rhymes. That's I was awesome. started off writing poetry. Um, I always loved to write and read and express myself. And mm -hmm. I was really into uh, Alice Walker when I was a kid, okay. um, reading all of her books. And, of course, uh, one of my favorite authors, Toni Morrison, um, you know, I was reading a lot of those a lot of those stories when I was younger, and so I wanted to be able to express myself in mm -hmm. that same way. Mm -hmm. So I started writing. Absolutely. Young, you started writing short stories and poems, and and then hip hop, man. Oh, hip hop yeah. changed my life because I was so intrigued by MCs and their ability to tell these really intricate and important stories about what was happening in their community, mm -hmm. and do it to a dope beat that everybody could rock to. And oh yeah you know, moving the crowd and the whole energy in that Absolutely. and the positive vibrations that was coming from artists like Tribe Called Quest and mm -hmm. uh, Queen Latifah and MC Light and The Roots and um, De La Soul. I oh, mean, yeah. Yeah. so much like really cool hip hop yeah, stuff. Yeah, absolutely rev revolutionized the yeah, music Yeah, man, genre. like absolutely. for real, Gangstar, all those cats. I was into all of that That's when I was awesome. young. Now, I remember you, we were hanging out the other night down at the bar and you were telling me that you would do MC battles. You would be like the backing bassist for MC battles. You want to tell me a little bit about that? Because yeah. that was awesome. Yeah, man. Well, you know, it's funny because it got started in Atlanta where for me, I started playing um, at this, <laughs> my very first gig was at a comedy club. Okay. And we would play behind the poets who would open up the show okay. for the comics. And uh, the bass player uh, who, who pulled me in on that gig, his name was Torres Mateen. Mm -hmm. And this is when I knew nothing. I still don't know anything, <laughs> but I really didn't know anything at all about bass playing. And Torres would show me the bass line on stage mm -hmm. And then he would solo all over it while the po while the poet was was oh, doing their poem. That's incredible. It was so cool, and so that sort of parlayed into this whole MC battle mm -hmm. culture that started. Yeah, well, yeah. MC battling is as old as MCing, mm -hmm. you know. But there used to be these MC battles at this place called uh, Yin Yang Cafe, and later on it started. It took on the name Apache Cafe. We would play there every Wednesday night. MCs would get up on stage, and out of the spirit of that improvisation. I would just start up a bass line or mm -hmm. the keyboard player starts some keys, the drums kick in, and we got a whole hip hop groove going on. The crowd's oh, getting wild yeah. and the MCs are going for it. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, I would it love was to so see something dope, like that. Man. That is so awesome. I've loved how lately the, the move has been getting live bands for hip hop artists. It's kind of oh. coming back and it's incredible. That's what it's about. Yeah, exactly. Because you had that like early 2000s, maybe like mid 2000s, it was getting real. Like everything was like NPCs and like triggered stuff. Well, ain't which is like great. You know what though? I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting that hip hop, well, just musicians in general, mm -hmm. started playing, especially drummers, started playing like the NPC. Yes. So yes. with the whole Jay Dilla movement oh, and his, man. his, his, genius with the MPC Absolutely. He's and the way he started moving the culture in a direction, in a the sonic direction, that musicians started copying and yeah. imitating what the electronic producers were doing mm -hmm. and it just started being this reciprocal sort of vibe yeah, happening absolutely. between the two. I remember Questlove did the Red Bull Music Academy session, I don't know if you've seen that one, and he's talking about how Jay Dilla's, the way that he would, because he didn't quantize, you know, he would right. just play it, and that's what made it so natural and so human, and he said that just changed his life. He, he, what did he say? He was saying something like, the kick drum is like it was played by a drunk baby, Yeah. you know, and just yeah. real stuttery and real crazy stuff, <laughs> and just like, absolutely changes, like, you, you can't help but just move to it, you know exactly. what I mean? It's just all pocket and his bass lines with his like Moog synths and stuff. Ooh. 
Oh yeah, Dilla was incredible. Yeah. And then the whole Donuts album he was making when he was sick in the hospital. Yeah. He was just on a little SP 303 with his little 45s and stuff like that. This dude. Absolutely incredible. I could listen to that over and over Genius. and over. It's beautiful. And he just takes these samples and throughout the whole thing tells an entire story. Yeah. And it's incredible. There's an art form to that. People always talk trash about uh, rap music because of the samples, mm -hmm. you know, but when you reimagine these samples in the way that these guys bring it yeah. to you, you, you never would have thought about using that sample in that way. Absolutely. And so there is this creativity in that that I think people don't really don't really give respect to. But oh, I no, tell absolutely. you, you pull up a DAW and throw some samples in there or pull out an MPC and throw uh -huh. some samples in there and see if you can be that creative. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It takes a certain ear for music and to, to match these melodies and these bass lines. And it's something people don't understand that you're taking the entire track. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you have to make sure that all of these pieces go together properly yeah. to make something beautiful because you can take it wrong so easily. Absolutely. Dr. Dre different. was the king. Absolutely. Dre man. is incredible. Ninth Wonder is incredible. Woo. I don't know if you heard of yeah. Knowledge. He's a newer cat, but he's, oh, wow. he's incredible. Yeah, man. All oh, those. man. He, does, uh, he did a project with Anderson Pack. Are you familiar with Anderson yeah, Pack? Of course. They did No Worries. Oh, and that dope. was, oh my God, just his, the use of his samples is just yeah. incredible. And I remember growing up, I wasn't too into hip hop, and that's kind of how I felt, that mindset of just like, oh, you're just taking other stuff. But then you listen, and it really is like, not only is it like a musical collage, but you're opening people's eyes to stuff they may not have listened to before, like Absolutely. that old R&B and soul stuff. You Absolutely, because people go back and they discover these artists exactly. who were creating this beautiful music that they, that they never had any idea mm -hmm. existed in the world. I think hip hop really opened me up to different types of music, especially jazz. Yeah, oh yeah, me too. Me I, too. I didn't grow up in a house where, where my, my parents didn't listen to jazz. They listened mm -hmm. to a lot of funk okay. and soul music, R&B. But... Um, but listening to hip hop, I got into jazz artists and started, you yeah. know, researching jazz artists. And mm -hmm. then as a musician, I really got into mm -hmm. listening to Absolutely, jazz yeah. Jazz you too, get yeah. people like, like Mad Lib flipping jazz standards Ooh. all the time, and it's incredible. Yeah, I mean, incredible yeah, stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But like I was saying, though, it's really cool getting the live artistry back into the game because people are taking all of their inspiration from stuff like that mm -hmm. and almost recreating that yeah. stuff on stage in a live setting and it's absolutely. absolutely incredible to listen to. Yeah, I just saw Robert Glasper and Chris Daddy Dave oh, and um, nice. Derek Hodge at the Blue Note. Okay, Woo! okay. I mean, he's there for a month. If you can in any way get mm -hmm. to New York and, and listen to the stuff that these guys are doing, just you incredible. will be there invigorated. Oh, man. And every night is something different. Mm -hmm. I think this week he has uh, Yasin Bey formerly most deaf, formerly okay. known as okay. most deaf. I can only imagine. I'm so mad that I'm not there. Yeah, that's probably absolutely incredible. What? That guy's crazy. Wow. And I remember um, nice they were, there was a video by, I think it was Earworm. Have you watched Earworm videos? Mm -hmm. It's by Vox. And they break down. There's one where they do one like, oh, how Jay Dilla humanized the NPC. But there's one about flow and just like how people changed how the flow happens. And most deaf's or most deaf's thing was incredible about like, breaking down his lines and how he goes over the bar line and how he tells these stories in yeah. certain ways and it's like just it's this incredible appreciation that i didn't have before you mm -hmm. know what i mean and i'm so grateful to have been put onto these things and it's yeah. it changed how i play it changed how i listen to music it changed everything so oh, that's dope so yeah. what'd you grow up listening to i grew up listening to mainly like classic rock type stuff just mm -hmm. because that's what all my family listened to mm -hmm. and it was like stuff like rush and led zeppelin black sabbath all the classic stuff yeah you know but you I mean? was killing it last night at the classic rock <laughs> thank you so much see that's band. that's where i was wow. getting it it was deep in my heart <laughs> But then I, got a, I have a friend, his name's Anthony, he put me on to all this new stuff. He listens to jazz, he listens to hip hop, he listens to everything. And we would just hang out all the time and he would just be putting this stuff on and I'm like, what am I hearing? Like, this is incredible. Yeah. Because popular hip hop and rap isn't nearly what the underground stuff does, you know what I mean? It's not yeah. that it's bad, not to discredit it in any way, but yeah. there's something just so magical about that underground stuff. I remember he showed me MF Doom. Oh yeah. And that changed it. Oh, that no absolutely catch. changed it. And then I found like Anita Baker from his samples and stuff oh. like that. I got Rapture on vinyl. Oh, my God. I put on the first Anita. track and I was like, this is a Doom sample. Like, oh my God. And Dude. then everything just connected. And I was yeah. like, this is absolutely incredible. You so. know, I was listening to some Whitney Houston the other day and mm -hmm. even the mix mm -hmm. on those records. It's important. It's so important to get that right. You know awesome. what I mean? You gotta have those drums, like the drums and, and the, bass the bass have to yep. match absolutely perfectly. That's what it's all about. You can't have too much reverb. You gotta keep it kind of dry and yep. punchy. You know what I mean? Yep. And that just that changed my outlook on everything. It's incredible. Wow. Do you produce as well? I I dabble in it. You know, I, I wouldn't call myself a producer by any means, but I love to like chop up samples, run them into my computer. I have an MPC at home. I have an SP four hundred four. You know. Oh, word. I just go in there and I just mess with it, and I just get all my inspiration from all this stuff I'm hearing, and it's so fun because. 
Dilla would say, you know, don't look at the manual, learn it, you know, get the machine, yeah. learn it, do what you got to do. And so that's how I do it. I just go in there and like, obviously I know my effects because our, our channel is based on doing effects. Mm -hmm. So it's got all the multi-effect stuff. And I'm like, okay, okay, I can work with this. Like oh, I can make yeah. this happen. Absolutely. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's, it's an entirely different way to express yourself, you yeah. know, and it's, I love it so much. Which MPC do you have? I have the MPC 500 and a 1000. Oh, word. So like the, the battery yeah, powered one, uh -huh. one and yeah. then the, the bigger one, the, the, like the brother of it. Yeah. And then the SP404 SX. That's dope. And oh man. It's incredible. And then I got like an Akai controller and I work with Logic and I'll chop stuff up yeah. in there because I have contact. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I got contact. Yeah, and yeah. So it's Logic just, and it's so much I had fun. the MPC 2000. 2000, yeah, nice. Yeah, do you have the XL or just the regular? Just the regular okay. 2000. Okay. My joint. Oh. Yeah, that's legendary status right there. Yeah, a friend of mine's got a 2000 XL and it's just. I yeah. just love why I'll just sit in his room and just watch him, you know, just listen to him do his it's stuff. So and it's so much fun. It's You're magic. You're really playing, you know. Yeah, it's magic. It's exactly. Instrument. It's it's not sequenced. I mean, you can sequence it, but not sequencing it is so just like real and raw and it's something you can't you can't recreate any other way, you yeah, know. That's so, so true. So, I'm really glad to have gotten into that genre and all that kind of stuff. It's Super great. Super dope. Yeah. That's what's up. So uh, lately, you know, what have you been doing, like, gig-wise, who are you playing with, what kind of stuff are you doing? Um, I just did a television show called Black Girls Rock um, that airs on BET. It's super cool. It's a dope show about um, something that, that really shines a light on the work that black women are doing in the community, mm -hmm. in media and television, um, as far as activism is concerned. It's, it was put together by a woman named DJ Beverly, Be Beverly Bond. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just did that show and we did a dope tribute to Aretha Franklin. Oh, did you? Oh, yes. Man. So I got to play some Chuck Rainey bass lines. Oh, I'm going to have to check that out. And That's that was awesome. super dope. Um, I was just accepted into this program called Zoo Labs in mm -hmm. San Francisco. It's a studio in San Francisco where I'll have an opportunity to go for two weeks and record my next album. Oh, sweet. And I'm really excited about that because mm -hmm. me and the band just get to get in the studio, we live there, sleep there, eat everything and just mm -hmm. live in the studio, which is the best way to oh, make an yeah. album for oh, a group yeah. of people. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also part of this new program uh, put together by the U.S. State Department of all oh, really? things called Next Level, okay. where they send hip hop ambassadors uh, to different parts of the world really? and, and share in this cultural exchange of hip hop music because oh. hip hop has affected the world exactly. in a lot of ways like jazz. Mm -hmm. um, so we go into communities and build Mm -hmm. on the one common thing that we love in hip-hop music. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think a lot of times uh, we might not see eye to eye uh, in, in a political realm. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so to be able to connect with people uh, with hip-hop is, is a beautiful thing. Yeah, and like so. you were saying earlier, it's like you get these stories and you get just like such vivid imagery of what people are going through and the things that they have to put up with. And I think that's another thing that really spoke to me when I got into hip hop too, is because all that classic rock stuff is like, oh baby, ooh girl, is you know, it's all just the same shit, you know, mm -hmm. which is like it's good. But with some dope, with some dope riffs. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the riffs are crazy, but when you get in there and you, you you just feel the emotion, you know, and you hear the emotion and just, it's it's something you just can't explain. You know yeah. what I mean? That's awesome. So I think that's a really really cool opportunity. I'm surprised the State Department put that yeah. on too. That's yeah, it's been that's going crazy. on for a number of years now. Okay. But um, um, I can't remember. Um, it started up in North Carolina with this professor who wrote a grant mm -hmm. and talked about how important hip hop was mm -hmm. to the culture Absolutely. and how it had spread all over the world and it was something that unified people. Mm -hmm. So why not go and, and experience it yeah, in yeah, different yeah. cultures? And it gives me an opportunity to experience hip hop. I'm going to the Dominican Republic, so I'll get to experience okay. Uh, what hip hop is like there, which mm -hmm. is, it's huge. Yeah, it is. It's so giant out there. I'm really excited. That's they, be they're, really cool. They've been to Uzbekistan. Um, they've been to Turkey. We're going to Nigeria. Um, it's gonna be. That's interesting. That's really, program. really cool. Yeah, Just I didn't know anything about it. A friend of mine hit me up. Mm -hmm. I was like, the application um, session is open. Do you should apply? Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So when are you when are you going? When are you start I doing that? I leave in March for that. March. Okay. In the meantime, I have some shows coming up. I don't know when you're gonna air this, but I have some shows in Atlanta coming up in okay. November. I'm doing something uh, in two weeks in New York. Okay. So, you know, here and there, doing some shows, yeah, getting I'd ready for the next out. record. I'd love to come out and see you. That'd Where be great. Are you? If Where are you located? Uh, we're in California, but okay, I mean. Okay, I'm going to be at NAM. Oh, you are? Okay, yeah. sweet. We'll be there too. So yeah, we'll so see we'll you hang there. Out. So if you're going on a, you know, supporting your record and stuff too, I'd love to come out and see you. That'd be great. Absolutely. That'd be great. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. I'm Will with Basic Gear Review. We got Divinity Rocks here, the legend. And Divinity we'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah, DivinityRocks.com. We'll put it down here. Thank <laughs> you.